Hey guys, so I wanted to go through some of the features that the Fleer has compared to the Fluke. And I just kind of wanted to show you what, what you're going to get for your money. So this is going to be very, very generic. We're not really going to go too far into it um, because there's a lot of things that you can go through when it comes to the modes. Uh, you can auto range things or you can manually range things. You can go into the settings and change stuff around. This is not really a how-to video. It's more of a what do you get versus what the Fluke has to offer kind of kind of an idea. So the first thing we have is the Volt Alert. That's what's on right now. It's at the far left. Um, the Fluke does not have this function. What the uh, what the Volt Alert is, I keep calling it Volt Alert because that's what Fluke calls it. Um, what it does is if you have a energized source, you can actually physically pick up your multimeter and touch it against the source and it will alert you that there is voltage on it or there's not any voltage on it. So it's pretty nice. Uh, the Fluke does not have that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's go with the Ghost Voltage or the Low Z. Um, both multimeters have it. Um, the Fluke has the ability to combine, well, to have a split display there. Um, you do, you can do it on on the FLIR. You're just going to have to toggle between the two. Uh, you do have the ability to see the Hertz also, but you do have your Hertz on the top and your AC on the bottom. Um, the FLIR has a dedicated amp probe switch. Uh, Fluke does not have that. Uh, so you are able to go between 1 millivolt, 1 amp, 10 millivolts, 10 amps, or 100 millivolts, 100 amps. And this is where it lies. And right down on the bottom here, uh, throughout I think most of this, um, this is an analog bar graph down here. And you have your hertz on top, AC on the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to do AC voltage, and all right, so AC for the FLIR, you have your hertz on the top, AC on the bottom. If you hit your range, it's a manual, you can manually range it, um, and if you go through the very thing, you can go through hertz, AC, hertz, AC, the same thing. With the Fluke, um, you have your, you can uh, relative it, relative it out. Uh, DVM, DVV, Hertz, percentage, millisecond, okay. Um, DC voltage. DC voltage, uh, it's pretty standard, can't do anything different on DC. Um, with the Fluke, now this is a really cool feature with the Fluke, and I've only used it once, but you have the ability to do AC, you combine AC and DC, you have AC on the top, DC on the bottom, or you have DC on the top, AC on the bottom. So I've only used it once, but it is a really cool function if you're not exactly sure what your source is. Most of the time you probably should, uh, but this is, it allows you to have the ability to say, I have no idea if this is an AC voltage or a DC voltage, but let's find out. So it's kind of cool. And like I said, I've only used it once, but it's there. All right, so now we have millivolts, and technically it combines millivolts with temperature, and actually the same thing over here also. So there's your AC millivolts, and AC millivolts on the Fluke is actually down a couple notches, but right now we're in DC millivolts for the Fluke, and right now we're in AC um, millivolts for the FLIR. There's DC millivolts for the FLIR hertz only, and there's your, you do have the ability to choose between Fahrenheit or Celsius, you have to go through the menu, um, but you do have probes that go with this also that plug into the bottom. And there's your AC again, when it comes to the fluke, uh, there's your choice between AC, DC, AC plus DC, and DC and AC. Um, relative, millivolts, temperature, hertz, percentage, millisecond, um, now let's go to, oh actually you know what, let's do, since we weren't able to do it on this one, here's AC millivolts on the Fluke, it's picking up some, some voltage right now, some voltage is not there. Um, we have the same thing, percentage hertz, milliseconds, dBm, dV, relative, blah blah blah. We have, so let's go down to 
ohms for the fluke, it's ohms continuity in nanosecond. And for the FLIR, we have ohms continuity, a diode check, and a capacitance check. And you can do you can change between all that hitting the mode button. So right now we're in um, resistance. There's your capacitance, and there's your diode check. So with the fluke, you can choose right there between your bottom three, ohms nanosecond or continuity, roaming it out. And um, you also have the ability to do a beeper. So kind of neat. And here is your, for the fluke, here's your diode and capacitance test. Hit the menu and you're able to choose between the two. All right, so microamps. And for the, okay. And actually what's interesting is they have the milliamps after the microamps where they have the milliamps or in a fluke before the microamps. So uh, we obviously, apparently we can't do it without any test leads, all right? But you kind of get an idea so with the FLIR, you have ability to do AC and DC. With the Fluke, uh, you actually are able to do AC and DC also. And I can't do it right now. Um, but there is your amps. Amps also. And right now we're in milliamps. Um, you do have the ability to do milliamps AC and DC on the FLIR. And the ability to do milliamps AC and DC on the Fluke. Uh, the one thing the Fluke has over the FLIR is the ability to do a 50 ohm low ohm test. So beyond that, uh, both multimeters are fairly similar. So here's what they look like on the side. And this does have my calibration sticker, so it's technically still good for a little bit. Um, out of that. So here's the back end of both devices. Uh, so your battery pack is in here. There is your multimeter test lead area. Here is your thermal camera with your laser. There's your flashlight. And that's the bottom part of it. And with the fluke. Everything's integrated, so there's your test lead holder. That's where your metal, uh, your magnetic hanger goes. This is the battery compartment. This thing takes, so what is it, six or eight? I think it's six AA batteries. Instead of a nine volt, they combined six AA batteries. It's kind of a pain, but it works out well. The stands are pretty nice for both of them. And overall, they're pretty good devices, so.